Hello, this is William from Visual Components. In this video, I'm going to show you how to record a simulation as a 3D PDF. Now to get started, you can load any layout you want in the 3D world, or you can build a simple layout with me right now. I'll first go to the eCatalog panel, expand models by type, click feeders, and then add a basic feeder to the 3D world. Let's now add and connect a conveyor to this feeder. So under models by type, I'll expand conveyors, click visual components, and then add this item here called conveyor. So I'll drag it into the 3D world. Notice the PMP command is active, so I can plug the conveyor into the feeder. Let's now add and connect a shuttle conveyor to the other end of this conveyor here. So in the eCatalog panel display area, I'll do a search of shuttle to find a conveyor of that type. We found one item, so I'll drag that item into the 3D world. And I'll now plug the shuttle conveyor into the conveyor. And notice I connected the shuttle conveyor at its A-side port number one. Let's go ahead and add another feeder and conveyor and connect it to port two of the shuttle. So I'll select the feeder in the 3D world. I'll hold down the control key and click this conveyor to add it to the selection. And notice on the mini toolbar, there's a command called clone. And this allows you to quickly copy and paste selected components. So I'll click clone. Here are the copied components. And I'll now plug them into port number two. Let's now add and connect some conveyors to the B-side ports of the shuttle. So I'll select the conveyor here. I'll then hold down the control key and click this conveyor to add it to the selection. I'll then clone those conveyors. And I'll now plug the copied conveyors into those B-side ports. Now we have one more available port on the B-side of the shuttle. So I'll select this conveyor here. I'll clone it. And we do have one feature called automatic plug and play. So when you're copying and pasting components, they sometimes will plug into one another. So to correct this, I will drag the selected conveyor away to unplug it and I'll now plug the conveyor into port number four. Let's now run the simulation to see how this works. So I'll click the play button on the simulation controls and we can see the feeders create a component during a simulation. So it's a cylinder. They move along the conveyor's path and now we expect the shuttle conveyor to route them to one of these conveyors over here. So it takes a part and let's see where it routes it. So it routes it to this conveyor here, port three. Let's speed up the simulation just a bit. So the next part went to port four and the next part goes to port 5. Let's actually see what the routing rule being used by the shuttle conveyor is. So I'll select the shuttle conveyor in the 3D world. I'll go to the component properties panel and notice at the very bottom there's a section called routing rule. So I'll expand that and we can see that yes it's using a cyclic rule. So an incoming part first goes to port 3, the next part goes to port 4, and the next part goes to port 5 and the cycle repeats itself. So you can see here part was at port 5, the next part should go to this conveyor and then the cycle just keeps on going. Now, if you want to record a simulation, you can either record the simulation while it's running, you can stop the simulation and then record from that point forward, or you can record the simulation from its start by resetting the simulation. Now, I want to record the simulation from its start, so I'm going to reset the simulation to zero. And now to find the command for exporting your simulation to a 3D PDF, you can go to the simulation controls and click this command here called export to PDF, or you can go to the export group and notice that command is also listed here. So I'll click PDF, and notice we now have an export to PDF task pane. So you can choose what template you want for displaying the 3D PDF. So I'll use the Visual Components template. I'll keep the default frame rate of 10, and now we can define a title that appears in the 3D PDF. So I actually will change this to be example conveyor system, excuse my typing. And now to start the simulation and the recording, you can click this button here called Start Recording, and this will automatically start the simulation for you. Or you can go to the simulation controls and notice the play button is now a record button. So go ahead and click the record button and then save the file. And after you save the file, you notice the simulation automatically starts and now you're recording. Now one thing to notice about a 3D PDF is it doesn't matter how you move the camera of the 3D world. You know, you're, you're just going to render everything in the 3D world to that PDF. So don't worry about moving the camera around. So after everything kind of works its way through, you see this process in motion. So yep, everything repeated there. So now you want to stop the simulation and see the 3D PDF, or you could reset the entire simulation and then see the 3D PDF. Now in this case, I want to reset everything back to zero, so I'll click Reset. It will build the 3D PDF for me, and now it opened in Adobe Acrobat Pro, and here's the simulation. So I'll hold on the left mouse button to orbit the camera. I can pan it, and I can zoom. You also have these standard views here, so you can go to different views if you want. Ooh, ah, amazing. And you can see components listed here. Now, some components might not be listed here because you haven't turned on their bomb property. 
And to know what I'm talking about, I actually will go back to the simulation world and click these feeders. Let's go to the component properties panel. And you can see their bomb property here is not checked, so they're not going to be listed in the 3D PDF. But if you want them to be, just click this box here. Let's now go back to a 3D PDF, and your PDF might have loaded in your Adobe Reader, and you might get this issue here where 3D content has been disabled. Now to fix this, you can go to Options here, and you can trust this document, or if you don't want to see this again, you can go to the Edit menu, click Preferences, and notice you have a preference for 3D and multimedia. So right now you might have the Enable Playing of 3D Content disabled, but you can select this, click OK, and if you reload this document, it should play for you. Otherwise, you can just trust this document always, and it will always play what you want. And there's the simulation recorded as a 3D PDF. All right, this concludes the video. If you have any more questions, please feel free to visit our forum at forum.visualcomponents.com, and have a wonderful day.